Samantha Childers, professional uh, kite surfer and artist. Welcome to Irish Startup TV. Hey, what's up? We met via Instagram and yeah. I noticed you've just got this incredible art. Tell us a little bit how you got into art. Well, that's a little bit interesting because I've actually been painting in some ways sort of my whole life. I have paintings here somewhere that I've literally done when I was five years old. Um, no my dad, yeah, really, there's a couple somewhere around here that I have on canvases made really quite young. Um, but I never really got into it much till I was a teenager. And it was actually kind of funny because I just like, I had a friend that also did it. And so I kind of was trying to copy her because I thought she was really cool. And, and I don't know, next thing I know, a lot of people were sort of interested in it. And as I, and then my dad really liked to paint. So I'd always been around it. And so he was a painter and like his dad was a painter and so on and so on. And I don't know, the rest, the rest is kind of history, right? It just like, I have no doubt that I was born to paint. <laughs> it's amazing. I actually know a lady from Montreal and she's a stonemason and she couldn't understand why she's a stonemason. She's the only female stonemason in Montreal. And she discovered that when she picked up a chisel for the first time, it just felt natural. And on her grandmother's deathbed, her grandmother told her that her grandfather had been a master stonemason and his grandfather and father and, and all of this. So there's this concept of gene memory. So I don't know if you subscribe to that. It sounds like maybe you do. Uh, it's quite possible. I don't really know. It's, yeah, it is interesting. But like my dad wasn't a professional in the way I was. He ended up going more into graphic design and stuff. But we have like many paintings around the house and stuff like that that are his old pieces and you know he sold a few in his days he was quite talented and then um his grandfather as well and so on and so on apparently were painters for several several generations i haven't looked too far back other than the two or three generations but at the same time it's so what i've been told you know <laughs> no that's really cool that's amazing and you're also a pro kite surfer yeah actually um that's kind of a different part of my life if you'd asked me years before i wouldn't have imagined I would have got into in the way I have but um eight years ago I moved to the Dominican Republic from Toronto um when I moved there I had never seen the ocean I'd never been on a plane I'd never even heard of kite surfing and I kind of was on this like whim travel trying everything and sort of spent a little too much money learning to learn the kiting as a young age and ended up just sticking with it kind of because of this um, now, eight years later, I've competed all over the world a couple times in the world championships. I'm ranked second in Canada for freestyle kiting. And wow. I'm, yeah, it, <laughs> and um, I'm sponsored by one of my favorite brand companies, Liquid Force Kiteboarding. They also oh, yeah, they make wakeboards yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, you've probably heard of them. Yeah, stuff. I've used them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I pretty much just get to like cruise around painting and kiting. Um, not to like run on here about it, but the really cool part for the kiting too for me has been a fantastic way to actually brand my artwork. It's really allowed me to connect with a specific clientele that's extremely interested in sort of ocean inspired works and that kind of surfer lifestyle works. And as a result, it's kind of um, helped me develop a more individual style of art that kind of people can really look at and be like, oh, that's a Sam Chilvers painting you know which is amazing uh, you paint these amazing waves but what do yeah. you think you're most known for or what would you like to be most known for in the context of painting it's funny you say that because um in some ways I have this theory that like I haven't even barely started to write my story as an artist you know like I, I'm I'd like to think I'm still fairly young <laughs> um but I would the reality is my waves are what people are most interested in. They're definitely my best sellers. They're definitely the stuff that I get the biggest response to. Um, I've developed this kind of really unique style to myself that's literally sort of like a Jackson Pollock process that ends up looking like a wave. And it's really, um, it's something really quite cool. At the same time, my personal preference sort of of what I enjoy painting the absolute most are kind of... Um, these super detailed collage kind of paintings and they're a little bit more challenging to sell but at the same time they're very unique and they're something only I could have created like in that moment of time. So let's link a few of these into the video. 
perfect. I can definitely do that just to give you an idea. Because it is. Actually, I often meet people randomly and they kind of, you know, what do you do? And I'm telling them. And they ask me, like, oh, what do you paint? And so I usually almost always have to whip out my phone, which makes me always feel a little self-conscious and show them or whatever. But the reality is verbally, I actually can't really describe them. And you're not, there's what I'm describing. There's no way it's what most people are picturing in their head, which in some ways is kind of cool, but some ways, um, you know, and at the same time, I should probably add to that. Like, these are the things I do my smoke, my most favorite and for myself. But you'd also be blown away how many people will give you 500 bucks to paint their freaking dog. No way. No way. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but definitely in my earlier years, you know, there was a lot of times where I just did portraits and cool little things like that. So there's, you know, a, there's definitely a handful of, um, you know, pug Chilvers paintings out there. <laughs> That's amazing. Other things. Yeah. So. It's funny, actually, the picture behind you is my most favorite one. Um by coincidence from your Instagram pictures. Now, obviously, I haven't been through every single one, but I recognize it immediately. And it really spoke to me that there was a richness and an energy that, um, for me, with art, anyone can paint, but not everyone can speak to you through their art. Uh, so many paintings are flat and static and just like, I don't know, you know, uh, a road sign. Although road signs are actually pretty interesting in their iconography. So that's probably a bad example. <laughs> But yeah. I particularly love the depth and the energy. Uh, like, I'm really like, phew, I'm inside a green room right now when I see that picture. It's incredible. It's cool you say that because um, when I first started producing them a long time ago, I always visualized them on a really large scale because, okay. well, this was kind of my thought about it. As I started to get more into surfing and kiting, never yeah. growing up around the ocean, um, for me, like the thing I'm the most scared, one of the things I'm more scared of with surfing is waves. I'm not quite as comfortable with it. And it's because it's something that's more out of your control. Like, I don't know what the wave's going to do as much. Whereas like if I try a freestyle trick, it's kind of my own rotation, my own body and things. So I've had a couple of scares once or twice where, you know, I've got really caught up in the waves and tossed and you're kind of like swimming. Washing right. machine. Yeah, really. That's, oh yeah. <laughs> that's I'm not so much into normal surfing because I yeah. Like I'm living in a washing machine and um, I, there's kind of this moment I had in my head where I was like, you know, there's actually not a lot of people that truthfully will ever know what it's like to understand the power of what a wave is and to be yeah. inside of it and to really get that feeling of being submersed in water and you're, you're truthfully at the mercy of the ocean and that, but it can also be like so much pleasure in the right way as well. You know, you catch that perfect wave, it's that perfect moment and stuff. So I really started wanting to try and capture that feeling, which I, I thought the, one of the best ways to do it was on a really large scale. Like if you can imagine walking into a room and you truthfully feel like inside the painting. Um, however, just for like commercial purposes, there's not a whole lot of them I've created. Probably the biggest I've done are like eight by 10 feet, right? And usually those are private commissions or things, so. Okay, so if Maureen Tange is uh, watching, maybe, uh, I don't know if, if uh, there's something in that because I did an interview with her the other day and she set up a thing called Empty Art Agency. Um, she'd originally worked with a gallery and um, they had uh, worked with Banksy and yeah. then she went in a couple of different directions. She was a very young gallery uh, curator in LA and then she moved to London and uh, she seems to have, she mentioned uh, during her interview that, that there was a huge, uh, an artist did a huge installation at, uh, I think it's Orly, Orly Airport in Paris. Yeah. So, I don't know, Corinne, if you're watching, uh, let us know. And, uh, yeah. you know, that could be interesting. There's definitely a lot of options of cool things. And even like, there was the way you say it as an airport, like I could imagine riding to like a sort of beachy destination with that kind of feeling and stuff. Yeah. In Dublin Airport, actually, there's a huge picture of, do you know Stubbs and Whistle Jacket? Stubbs yeah. is this English painter, and he used, it's kind of um, like macabre, but he used to bring, like, uh, basically the uh, cadavers, cadavers of uh, animals, uh, carcasses into his house, and he basically learned the anatomy, and he produced this incredible life-size picture of a very famous racehorse stallion called Stubbs, and it hangs in the National Gallery in London. But there's a, a similar type, I guess, inspired picture. It's just basically a massive horse in Dublin Airport. And I don't know why it's there. It could be a nod to our rich equestrian heritage. Uh, but there is something very cool about those installations. 
And yeah. also that the reason I mentioned Stubbs is when I look at that image behind you and how it speaks to me and how you've described your art, it suddenly is making sense to me that it's coming from a rich and deep understanding of the ocean. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I wouldn't say rich and deep in some ways. Like I'm, it's a constant learning process. I mean, it's always changing. I see it. Well, like you said, compared to somebody who's maybe never been caught outside. Yeah, definitely. It. Um, it also like it allows me to connect with so many people because even those people who haven't seen outside like that kind of outside views and explore the ocean um everybody kind of has this connection with it you know like yeah even, even when you're in the snow like if you look at a wave painting or a sunset painting you it's like it's a, it's almost always a positive image in one way or another like it inspires you to think of you know warm sunny days or something which is um Hashtag that, Wanderlust. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, like, to just connect a little bit with another piece for me when you just say, um, about a year or so ago, creating a lot of these paintings actually became much more to me for the first time more than a job and then selling paintings because I really started to realize how many people I was connecting with in a positive way. And I was having Amazing. tons of customers writing me being like, you know, I get up in the morning and I look at my wave painting and I smile and I think like, oh yeah, warm, sunny, beachy days are coming. Like I'm to think that there's tons of people around the world that even if for 30 seconds in a day, they put a smile on their face because of something I made, it like makes me really be like, you know what, you can actually kind of make the world a better place with what you're doing. You know, it's like sending out good energy and good vibes and the positive energy I'm able to create and share with people all over the world through my paintings. If that like kind of makes sense in a cheesy way, but all of a sudden... Oh, it I makes say, absolute sense because I was literally talking to a journalist today about a, a particular topic and uh, I was saying how, like, you know, th this this particular issue, I said, oh, over Christmas, oh, I was a bit depressed by it. You know, a lot of, lot of troubles going on in the world. But I decided that the only solution is to try and just do one thing to be nice to somebody else every day. And yeah. for me, I understand that because I love to share photographs yep. um, and to try and give something that gives somebody joy. And I feel like super motivated to do that every day. I don't always get to do it every day, but yeah. uh, it's a really nice aspiration. Yeah, no, for sure. It's like an exchange of positive energy is the way I exactly. see it. And, uh, exactly. And as a result for me, it just allowed me to also grow more and produce more artwork and become like the artist that I'm destined to be. <laughs> well, that's amazing. So on that very note, so it's kind of <laughs> random because I came into contact with you uh, via Instagram because you were liking my photos. Now we're going to park that for a second, but the particular photos that you were liking um, I was in Portugal uh, a few months back and I posted some beach pictures and I used certain hashtags and I suddenly realized that these pictures were getting a much better return. And then I found that I came back to Ireland and I started to post sunsets. And I realized that if all the hashtags I've ever used, hashtags to do with wanderlust, summertime surfing, kite surfing, was giving me almost like the best return. So what I started to do is to try and focus more on kind of ocean scenes. And yeah. kind of when we were chatting, there's kind of two elements to that. So do you want to speak firstly to maybe the inspiration that uh, people have when they see ocean scenes on Instagram and, and how they engage as a, a kind of a market opportunity that you've identified? Well, if you think about it, it's something that really connects us all, right? In one point of your life, like pretty much any, every, I shouldn't say this pretty much everyone, but pretty much sort of everyone from middle to upper class and then some will go to the beach you know yeah, it's an aspiration for a lot of people it's yeah true. and it's never like that's where I say it's a place that's very associated with good vibes and positive energy and then there's like there's a it's a variety of things right because even if you're not that person that's the beach loving person I also there's a huge niche market like not even I shouldn't even say niche market there is a huge market of surf culture like yeah. we know both surfing, both, and like for me, I connect both. Exactly. <laughs> if you're into like board sports, you're gonna you're gonna be into that surfing vibe. So like that all connects with so. And then you it's like the list of that sort of goes on. Like you love the beach, you love the ocean, you love travel. And some people, it's there's even a handful of people that just um they connect and enjoy my artwork as an artist. And then I think I'm um, another aspect of it just is. So there's this kind of aspect, as much as I love creating art and having these concepts to it, 
from a commercial perspective, especially on the scale I'm working, people still are buying an object. You know, you're buying an item. You're not just buying a product. Yes, exactly. You're not just like buying a piece of my soul. You're buying an item. And the reality that is that you've put work into, you've put time into, you've put experience into, all of those things with dollar value. Yes, but the and but the fact of that also beyond it, especially in our super material world, is you want something that looks nice on the wall of your house, that fits in with your decor. Um, you know, you don't want this crazy abstract horse or what I mean don't get me wrong not to knock anything but it's like you want something how did you know I love crazy abstract horses I I grew up with horses (laughs) you know what I mean like you want no I know I know it's a true story but yeah no I know I I, 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 super subjective I totally have clients that absolutely like love my collage styled unique pieces and have allowed me to do some incredibly creative and unique paintings that have put like my mind to constant challenges but at the same time there's like it's a mix of everything there's people that want original fine art they want something supportive they want some this is another thing they want something they connect with and I'll just touch back to this here um a really interesting thing for me is years ago I recall reading a study as to why do people purchase art right the the number you know and they went into two different sort of lifestyles they went into somebody that would say like the wealthiest of the wealthy and they also went in someone to like sort of the poorest of the poor. This was in the States, by the way, just so you know. And in the wealthiest of the wealthy, they would have, say, an original tiny Cezanne painting on the wall, right? And in the poorest of the poor, they would have, say, like a mock calendar with the Cezanne painting on it, you know? And it would, and you would no. ask, yeah, but you would ask, they might not know it's Cezanne or whatever. And you would ask both of them, why did you purchase this particular image? And the majority of the answer was, for example, because it reminded me of my childhood cottage. So as soon as there was this personal connection, um, people feel much more inclined to want to purchase art. So it's really an interesting thing that I kind of actually studied a lot, which is a little bit before why I was extremely interested in my collage pieces because of the variety of subject matter. There was always something someone would look at and be like, oh man, the flamingo, like I used to go visit my grandparents in Florida and there was always flamingos I love this painting you know you know how the Brilliant. rest of it is like yeah nostalgia is is a yeah. is a massive thing as well it's a, yeah. it's kind of to do with this amazing well, yeah, I shouldn't even just say the example of like the summerhood cottage but it'd be these personal connections where you would be like oh you know like I have that breed of dog or I'm really into like these kind of parrots or something as soon as that personal connection it um, becomes much more valuable to them. And it's quite interesting to see that sort of aspect of it, which leading all back to that is so many people have a large personal connection with the ocean and with the water and with the beach and with all of that, which is kind of what I think has a huge factor as to why these have such a commercial potential. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Easily. Nothing wrong with that at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Once you don't compromise your values, you know, that's totally cool. Well, as I've been able to develop the last sort of year or so, this, as I sort of call it, kind of like abstract Jackson Pollock style, um, it's allowed me to do something that I haven't seen anyone else really doing. I mean, I see other artists producing waves, capturing photographs of them, painting them, but I haven't seen a single person take the kind of process that I'm taking. Like, I take a w- almost 100% abstract process of, like, pouring paints and just, like, throwing it at the canvas. And somehow when I'm done, it, like, looks bang on like a wave <laughs> yeah whatever you're doing keep doing it because you are definitely bringing this energy and this uh, reality into them which is quite extraordinary especially if it sounds a little bit ad hoc arguably but maybe there's some crazy stuff going on going back to that g memory stuff that you know exactly what you're doing at some level i mean it's i haven't been i didn't start doing this yesterday first off i yeah, mean yeah. I'm more or less professionally pursuing it for the last 10 years and more or less full time for the last 10 years. So the reality is um, I've studied a lot, not studied, but sort of follow the trend, follow the marketing, follow what works for me and what hasn't. And um, it's just kind of interesting to look at those dynamics. And it's obviously had a huge influence on what we produce. I mean, I know there's some artists that are really true to their artist integrity, um, but I don't know. I also like to eat food, you know. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. You've got to find that balance. Yeah. Now, you know, speaking about, uh, like, kind of alluding to the graph, um, you know, speaking about uh, the product side of things, what are your top tips 
for maybe using Instagram as a marketing tool? Yeah. Um, okay, so my top tips for Instagram. Hmm. It's really interesting. I think, first off, one of the biggest reasons I'm able to be successful at this age for painting and literally selling. Like, I meet so many people, and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I paint pictures. And I'm like, <laughs> you actually make money doing this? And <laughs> to be honest, I actually do really well. But it's because of the current change in the market the last 10 years with basically Instagram and Facebook, I can post a painting online and it connects huge with people. So my biggest tip that I would actually be to say to people, and you can study how this works for you, and to be truthfully honest, shell out some money. I'm serious. Whether it's to Facebook promotions, Instagram promotions, private companies, even if it's paying your local photographer for higher quality content. Um, I have no problem if I see someone on the beach and they take a really great photo of me, I definitely, here's 20 bucks, thanks, I want the original, you really? know? Really? Right. Oh, all the time. I can say I've paid probably close up to $200 to create one solid. And do you think is that because you're an artist? Because, like, there's so many scenarios where people will just rip off other people's stuff. And when I mean rip off, I mean, like, literally physically just, like, take it off the internet and post it again. So this actually, for me, comes down to almost nothing to do with art. This is basic business sense. It's like Facebook and Instagram are the daily newspaper nowadays. And as we said earlier, like I'm selling a product. And if I want more people to view and buy that product, the number one thing you're going to do is put marketing. This is why there's TV ads and newspaper ads. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. But the integrity of when somebody takes a photograph and you give them 20 bucks what inspires that is that a, a function of you understanding that you know people have to live and that there's a value in what they do because you extract a value as well from a similar scenario um it's a it, i mean there's obviously a variety of scenario if the person is i hate to say this if it's like a friend of mine or something and they just snap a photo like you know, usually it's, yeah, it's all about context yeah it all depends who you are and what you're doing in that sense and the reality is I want people to pay me for my art. Why am I not going to put that forward? If I'm going to try and make a profit of it, like, I mean, obviously all of these things I have to consider and discuss and like, you know, I'm going to be logical about what this person may or may not. But by all means, if I'm working with someone who's a professional, I mean, again, it comes back to sort of the content, like, Think of Instagram like the new form of the newspaper. If they have won a really good story or a really good photo on something, they're going to pay to have that image in there. And they're going to use their best judgment on what will work and what won't. And I always, and like, as I kind of touched back earlier, so what I'm doing I see as this sort of exchange of positive energy. So that can't be all give and take also. You Absolutely. know, you got to keep that energy flowing. And the more I can give to somebody, the more I can bring in and the more it puts me on that kind of frequency to abundantly share my art and also share that with other people, right? So it's like... It's like the kind of whole karma paying it forward vibe, whereas the more I can support somebody to support my business, yeah, the, it's more, pretty great. the more it gets like all that energy and ball rolling. And it's attitude as well. If people have that attitude, yeah. it sort of sets the scene for others to behave. Again, yeah. going back to I alluded to having a chat with a journalist earlier, and it was about a specific thing. And we were kind of like, look, rather than giving out, we need to set the right example of how to do things well and then just encourage other people to do the right thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Sometimes I think to myself where I'm like, you know, I don't really want to have the $20 for this. And then I'm like, you know, think about how happy you were when the first people would give you like 20 bucks for a small painting or something. You Amazing. Know? The person's going to take that 20 bucks and then like whatever they do with it, it's going to make their life a little better. And it's like, I don't know, it's just once I started thinking a little more like that, it was sort of the more the more went out, the more went in, in a sense. And um, it's really cool to also put that energy out in a positive way that I can again like just with my art help make other people's sort of lives just a little bit better <laughs> okay that's amazing now to balance this as well with some um some practical uh, wizardry uh you mentioned uh the ads now everyone's familiar with ads because they're popping up all the time but you also mentioned services talk to us a little bit about the kind of services that you've discovered that are helpful to help build a, an Instagram following Okay, so I'm always like, as, I, as we spoke a little bit earlier privately, I'm a bit, I'm open about this, but sometimes I feel shy about it because people, um, they do frown upon it. But I have tried a variety of different marketing services and things for Instagram and Facebook. 
Um, I have tried using other sites to because there's some major sites where if you pay them, they'll feature your work. I didn't get a huge response from this. I actually had some people give me some issues. I didn't get nothing. It was a little bit challenging to pick the right one, to know to who send money to. Um, I have tried also like all of the promotion ads through Instagram and Facebook. And sometimes I'm not sure. I feel like on Facebook, I actually get some responses from the ads. I really do. I often get a lot more like creepy guy messages from those ones though I will say. Just you you posted an absolute doozy the other day. Oh yeah 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 this, so yeah that's the <laughs> yeah. thing. I think if I run a promotion through Facebook or Instagram particularly Facebook I usually get one or two sales from it um, but I find I often get more creepy guy and it's frustrating too because they monitor like is your ad successful or not so then like if I don't respond to the creepy guy. Oh uh, yeah 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 so yeah. Not and I'm like I'm not writing oh my back. God. Dude, like, no, sorry. So like, no, no, we got to engage. It was funny you complained yeah, about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we got, this is not the engagement I want. Um, <laughs> for the last year or so, I've used a company that is called HyperSocial. Um, they, as the algorithms change, I've had more or less success for them. with them. For me, they've actually been the most successful company that I've worked with. What they actually do is, and I'm sorry if you follow me and you think we're really good friends, um, they do a lot of interactions for me. They basically, and I know this is a little frowned upon in some ways because people, it kind of ruins the integrity of Instagram. Um, at the same time, the results I've had from new clients, new business responses, even this is basically how I met you, <laughs> is um, it's it's basic business in a sense where it's got me a huger, a, a way wider audience with the kind of clients. Yeah, and I'm going to jump in there and I'm going to defend you straight away. And I'm going to say that, yeah, so the bots are helping you to get out there by somehow kicking the engagement. But to be fair, for me, because I see this all the time, to be honest with you, I didn't know why it was happening. That's why I don't follow people in general. But the reason I followed you was because your art spoke to me in a way, in a very visceral kind of a way, that it, it had some kind of a, like a, an emotional moving in me. And that's very rare for me. So, Thank you. you know, that's the context. So I think to be fair to balance, I, you know, I think that you know, whatever about getting a bit of a kick at the end of the day, if you're putting up rubbish, people wouldn't be following you. Yeah. Well, this is my result is like, I'm not doing it for any weird, like, I don't know, ego or something. It's basically, as I started putting maybe about 50 to a hundred dollars a month into this kind of marketing, I'm just getting a wider audience of people seeing my art. And as a result, they literally see it and go, wow, I like that. I want that. Then they click on my profile and they're like, wow, this chick's really interesting. Like, she's pretty legit. I want to buy her art. And um, it was just, that's why I say it's like just basic marketing. And, and the reality is too, like, if you like my artwork, if you message me personally, I will totally respond and do an interview or with you, you know, like I'm not not also I mean I'm doing my own posts I'm trying to connect with people in some ways like personally in any way and to try to be like polite as long as you're not the creepy dudes that are like hi <laughs> no, just, um yeah <laughs> so basically I try to like be as genuine with it as I can but it's the as I say the results I was getting is night and day difference awesome um, well thanks for the learnings and and thank you for your honesty and maybe I think yeah, I noticed that the bandwidth is getting a bit stuttery. So I think Skype doesn't like uh, people using the videos for too long. So yeah, yeah. maybe as some like closing words of inspiration, what's next on your, your personal roadmap? And uh, I don't know, maybe what advice have you got for other aspiring artists slash kite servers slash people of the world? Um, well, it's kind of funny. What's next on my list is I'm actually in Canada visiting my mom this week. Nice. Hi, mom. Know, I'll be heading back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> Video, don't come in for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next week, I'm actually headed back to La Ventana, Mexico, for a small competition. Nice. The La Ventana Classic. It actually supports oh, wow. the charities in Mexico and stuff. Um, and then, in the cutest way, I've just started a very wonderful new relationship. So, me and my gentleman partner will be heading back to the Dominican Republic around the beginning of February. Nice. And, uh, that's pretty much it, you know, to keep working on my goals. And so you just broke a lot of creepy boys' hearts out there. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I don't follow today. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah. So anyways, that's, that's kind of the plan. And just to keep working on my business growing, I have a few, you know, sort of personal goals within my art and travel and kiteboarding this year. But I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, hopefully you'll see me accomplish them. Um, awesome. And just lastly, to touch your little piece of advice thing, if I can give everybody one piece of advice, I kind of, I take this from actually one of my favorite books, which is You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And it's like, it's tenacity. Be the last person standing. Like, don't give up, you know? Um, no matter how long the road takes you or whatever, just keep trying and keep doing it every day and keep following through as um, as if that's the life you want to live, you know? Like, and, and that's kind of the, the one piece of advice because trust me, there's moments that I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this, especially a few years ago. And if you give up and just keep going I think um really beautiful things will happen <laughs> how do you how do you dig yourself out when you're at that position of you're properly on your chin strap and you're like oh no the world's coming down around me um my mom has this little quote she used to tell me and she says how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time so one when foot I, in front of the other yeah yeah so it's like when I am feeling really stressed or low I usually have a list of tasks from here till Christmas to do and honestly as I sit down and start working through each one of those tasks through each job for the client to ship this to do this to train to surf to go to yoga within a week it's like something has happened in the universe that has changed whatever the situation was whether it's a trip whether it's a client commissioning something whether it's um, a new relationship whatever you know it's, it's so that's always my attitude where it's like you know just don't give up and um trust the process you know like just have faith have faith Back that, yourself. yeah man like have faith in what you don't already see and be grateful for it and work through it one step at a time right on <laughs> samantha chilvers it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much no problem you too man cheers